It's the midweek. Time to catch up with Dylan Butler, a friend from uh, MLSsoccer.com and a bunch of other places. You know, Dylan, you and I could probably talk high school sports too, but that would be like high school sports down here, and that shows up Thursdays at 2.30 in the morning. Uh, so <laughs> we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, I guess the, the first thing on my mind is do we continue to – Look at Austin FC with our own peril and seeing that right now that they're still number two in the West and got a big win over Houston the other night. I think you stamp, you, you place the stamp on them as, as a legit contender right now. Like you've got to, right? Like they've, they've got enough of a, of a, of a body of work now that you could say they're for real, right? Like you've got to take them seriously early on. You know, when we, when we spoke, um, the three of us who were like, ah, you know, the early season schedule kind of, you know, they, they got Cincinnati, which at the time was a bad team. We thought they had Miami, which is a bad team still, but they, <laughs> but, uh, but they've gone even beyond that, right? Like they've gotten quality wins and they've been consistent as well. And, um, you know, they've got their style of play. And I think it's so fascinating when you look, at sort of uh, the two teams right now as the leaders in the shield is out of the West, right? It's LAFC and Austin built completely differently, right? Looking completely differently. Maybe the only similarities other than them both winning right now are fantastic home venues with, with a great home crowd. Other than that, just two different teams. And I think it's so intriguing to kind of see how two differently built teams are, are up there battling, you know, each other for the, for the top spot. All right, so let's let's get into that a little bit, and I think that that's kind of key to what makes MLS as as interesting a test case for development as it is, because you have clubs that go through their way of doing things through the academy, like a Philadelphia, like a Dallas, until recently when Dallas got to flip Ricardo Pepe and reinvest it in, in Velasco and such. Uh, you've got teams that go through their academies like Red Bulls, and they want to build from within and go up. And you have a second-year club in Austin who is navigating what they want to do and finding guys that, you know, might be from the Island of Misfit Toys, see Aruti Kama Maxi. Uh, I think he's played for pretty much every single <laughs> MLS team that is currently available. And, and then you find guys and you, you find those those places around the planet where you can bring in quality talent. You're not having to invest a boatload of money. We'll get into L.A. in just a little bit. But it just seems like you found your way, you're sticking to your game plan, and right now that's what Austin is doing, and you're seeing the results here in year two. Yeah, and what they didn't do, right, John, is they didn't blow it up after it not succeeding in year one. They believed in what they were doing, and they continued on that path, right? So, like, it wasn't wholesale changes a la Miami after last year where you see 20 new faces, right? It's it's just kind of tinkering along what happened in year one, which I think is important for them as well. And I think too, I was thinking last night after that, after that win uh, over Houston, I was like, you know, who maybe doesn't get enough credit for this and who probably should. Cause we, you know, everyone speaks about, about Wolf obviously, and he's the head coach and he's the guy front and center. But I think Claudio Reyna deserves a ton of credit and think about it too. Look what he's done in his relatively short time in, in Major League Soccer, right? Build New York's New York City FC. Obviously, he wasn't there when they won the cup, but his imprints were all over that that cup winning team and a team that is an elite team in MLS. And now he's, you know, again in a short period of time, uh, gotten Austin to a similar level. Um, and yeah, I think I think it's what works for you in that situation, right? Are they going to be a, a big spending team? Not, not necessarily, right? So, that, so they, they, they pick and choose their internationals. As you mentioned, you, you get guys, and Ethan Finley is another example from a Maxi Rudy, right? He's now on his third team, really succeeding, playing really well with, with Austin um, after Minnesota and after Columbus. Uh, Alex Ring, right, was the captain at at NYCFC. I was the first one to say too. I don't know if he necessarily, I didn't think he necessarily deserved a DP tag. They gave it to him though. And he's playing well. Um, Stuver similar, right? A guy who was a backup for his entire MLS career gets his opportunity and takes it really well. So I think, uh, you know, they've got the different pieces, the, 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 the international, but not necessarily the guy who's going to be on sky sports, you know, leading, you see him coming off a plane kind of a thing, right? They're not getting that guy. 
necessarily, um, but they're getting guys who fit what, how they want to play. Um, and I think that's super important. And, and, and again, I think it's just that belief in their system that they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't blow it up. Like I said, after year one, and, and we're seeing the, the, the results now in, in their, in their second year, very super impressed with what they've done. Yeah. They haven't freaked out yet. And they, yeah. cho- they chose not to freak out after that first year where everybody was sitting there going, okay, yeah, you're Austin. Yeah. You're a first year team. And you know, you're sitting there and you kind of poo poo the expansion thing, but they stuck with it and that's where they are right now. Okay. So let's go to the team that you mentioned that has the, the guy probably coming off the plane first and yeah. being on sky. Uh, Gareth Bale has his official – he's officially official with the press conference. You know, he's, he's had the presser. He's been asked the questions, well, why didn't you stay at Cardiff? Why didn't you stay – you know, and he, having to answer all those things. He did the car wash on ESPN and all that kind of stuff. So you're looking at Chiellini. You're looking at Bale. You're looking at LAFC, re-signing Carlos Vela for another 18 months, we think. And you, you look at this bunch, and they're the ones who are more than happy John Thorrington's going to sit there. You know what? It's like, I want my piggy bank. I'm going to take the hammer. I'm going to pop it. I want your piggy bank. I'm going to take it. I'm going to pop it. Any <laughs> piggy bank he can grab, they're grabbing it, and they're spending money to get this done. Love it. I absolutely love it because I think it it shows a, a level of and, – and I don't I don't think it's – I think it's smart spending too, right? Because those two guys you mentioned are on TAM deals, which is remarkable. Well, Urs right? Tanner, not- Tanner had a thing about that though. <laughs> okay. He, he wasn't, he wasn't, he's like, okay, now wait a minute. I find it difficult to believe that there are uh, out- TAM signings at only 1.6. Okay. I, mean, I talked about it yesterday, but yeah, Ernst Tanner wagging his finger at the whole thing, but yeah, no doubt about it. They're, they're spending smartly under the guidelines yeah. that MLS has. And they have a DP spot still available right and and with the promise of of filling that as well but it's the ambition that i love from lafc it's like you know we're in la we're gonna be that super club and we're gonna sign these guys right and like they're i i think kind of they're pushing the envelope right like either and and as we just said with austin there's different ways to get to the finish line right it's not it's not all a Ferrari to the finish line. Like there's different ways to get there, but for those other teams that are, that are like-minded as LAFC and the team across LA in Carson is a similar team. Uh, they're saying, listen, we're, we're, we're going to be the trendsetters here. We're, we're leading the way we're pushing the envelope. You know, either you spend like us and you have similar ambitions or get out of the way because uh, you know, they are, you know, think about it, right? I mean, like the the El Trafico was. I mean, I, I I love every version of it. I watch every match that I that I can. Um, it's always so interesting and exciting. And, and this, look at it now, right? Like Bale hasn't played, but the next time they play, right? Like you've got Bale, you've got Chiellini, you've got Chicharito. I, it's incredible. Maybe maybe I don't know Luis Suarez, right? Like that's now in the conversation. Uh, they obviously ha- LAFC has the means to pull that trigger if they want. Right. And Luis Suarez has said, I want to go to a team that is a playoff contender because I want to be able to play into November. And, and, and and I think what we're seeing uh, uh, not to open up a whole nother conversation, but I think what we're seeing this year in MLS, especially, and that's why we're getting the bales and Luis Suarez and, and those types is because it is a World Cup year, right? And they need and, and the way the window is, MLS is kind of really uniquely situated to give these guys that opportunity, the perfect kind of run up to get to the tournament, to be in their top form, to be playing uh, high level games to go to Qatar with, right? So that's why we're seeing a lot of these guys make these moves. You know, they'll say everything nice about wanting to be in the league and, and it's, a, it's a growing league, but um, it comes down to their football and they need to play. They need to be playing on a regular basis. And that's why a bail is doing that. And that's why Luis Suarez right now is looking at MLS as like his preferred destination to be able to do that. But he's got to go to a team that will be playing into November uh, this season. And, and obviously, you know, the, the usual suspects like a Miami, they're not going to be that team. Right. So LAFC is kind of uniquely situated to be able to, to pull the trigger financially and also then give him what he needs. And then think about that front line, if you will, <laughs> of Bale, Suarez, and Vela uh, eh, for LAFC. Eh, average. 
and then Arango maybe off the bench, or do you deal him and 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 you, you get even more monopoly money? I mean, it's amazing. Well, okay, so I'll push the the conversation from Carson and Toronto off to the side for a second because since you've opened this door, and it's a door that we have talked about here in the network for a long time. And I think it's a, a it's coming faster to Don Garber and Major League Soccer than they might have anticipated because you have an LAFC that wants to spend money. You're seeing what's going on in Toronto. You're seeing what uh, LAG is wanting to do. And when do we get to the point where Major League Soccer realizes finally and puts it in the fine print that we need to kind of take the shackles off here when, when it comes to cap and let those folks who want to spend to the extent that an LAFC wants to spend, like an Atlanta United has spent in the past, when do we take the shackles off and let folks do what they want to do? It's a great question. And, and I think it's one that's been asked of every time I feel like Garber's had like a state of the league or, or, or one of those uh, open conversations, obviously uh, it, the expansion is always part of that conversation. It feels like he's always asked about NYCFC stadium. Uh, and then he's asked, yeah, about, about a salary cap and about the, about spending more. And um, initially it was just sort of about, about being able to compete with, with Mexico, right. And Liga MX teams. And, and a lot of the thought was that's how you do it is by being able to spend more uh, and obviously, Seattle has proven that you know, look, we we could win Champions League without having to to reach the highest levels, even though they are a high spending team. So, I, I think to if I were to get my crystal ball and kind of forecast, I would I would bet that you'll see like incremental, you know, the extra TAM, the U twenty two initiative, things like that, to kind of continue push, push, push a little bit. And then I think when the World Cup comes here either just before that or just after that, I think that's when it's just going to be wide open. It's going to be like the NBA kind of a thing. And and I, I think that's when MLS will push through the ceiling of maybe being a, I don't know, would you even dare say like a top five league, right, in, in the world? Uh, and, and, you know, when you mentioned, and I was thinking the World Cup, you know, somewhere in that, that World Cup 26 zone to sit there and it's like, all right, you guys want to do it. But, you know, if you want to spend over X amount, you got to do luxury tax. And you've got to yeah. do all those kinds of things like, like you're mentioning with the NBA. Uh, you mentioned the folks in Carson. Let me circle back to that. And I think that you, it's, it's almost that keeping up with the Joneses bit where LAG is sitting there going, yeah, we're seeing what's going on across town. And we've got to wave our hands in the air like we do care and go, we'll, we're spending money too. We'll bring folks in and try to find a way to get rid of Douglas Costa because that hasn't worked. That literally yeah. has not worked. And I think that right now with a couple of weeks left here in, the, in this uh, secondary window, LAG might try to find a way to, to match the shiny new toys that are going on over at the bank. And it's amazing, right? Because they, as they're waving their hands, they're like, hey, we did this first. We, we were the guys. You know, we, we had Keen and Beckham, remember? Like, we, we led this way. But, you know, that was back in the day, right? Like, that's no longer the case. So, um, yeah, I, I, and that's what I love about this, right? It's, it's, it's the relevance in your own market to compete now, right? Like, LAFC did it their own way. Yes, obviously, they, they made a major splash by getting a Carlos Vela. Um, and then they were going like the younger, like NYCFC-esque, younger South American talented players like an Atlanta does as well. Um, but now they've just completely like, they're like, look at look at us now, right? Like with Bale and Cialini and, and, and possibly more. So... Yeah, it's, it, it now pushes the envelope for, for, for the Galaxy, and, and they've always been the team to do that. Um, they've never shied away from that. Um, I think part of their problem, in addition to Costa, is is the right formation, right? Like, it's, it's, it's frustrating because for Greg Vanny, he knows how he's best going forward, like in, in terms of attacking, which is with two forwards, right? With, with Chicharito and, and Djokovic. But that's not the case defensively, right? They lose their numbers now in the midfield. Uh, and those guys aren't the ones necessarily tracking all the way back to defend. So 
that's that, that balance right now that he's trying to, to, to find. And we saw that as well in, in, in the latest Trafico, right? Where uh, when they went forward, they looked pretty good. But then an LAFC is such a team where they catch you in transition and it's so quick uh, that they got burned and, and they got burned for two quick goals where, where Vela was such a big part of, of, of those two goals they scored. So I think that's a, that's a, a tough sort of balancing act. You know, you can only play with 11. I think Vanny would love a 12. <laughs> then he would have that extra midfielder and the two forwards. Um, but, uh, but that's, I think the, one of the problems right now for, for the galaxy. Is there any truth to the rumor that heading into this particular Serie A season, Bill Manning is going to buy the spot from Hellas Verona to try to have Toronto FC playing in both Major League Soccer and in Serie A. Is there any truth to that rumor with all of these folks that are now moving over to BMO to try to turn TFC into Serie A West? Yeah, I cannot confirm nor do not know. I... <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting, man. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I love Toronto as a city. It's a, it's a fantastic metropolitan city. Um, some good places to eat, I guess, even more better Italian places now yeah. to, to, <laughs> to eat. Um, yeah, I, again, too, I love, I love that ambition. Um, I think, I think the, potential worrisome thing for me with Manning is you're putting all of your eggs into that same basket. Right. So if it doesn't work, it's, it's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's going to be a bad, uh, bad batch of risotto there for you, but if it works, uh, listen, you know, it, it's awesome. Again, it, it's what's intriguing here with them is they hit the reset button with Bradley. Right. But then they even realize at the start of this year, well, hang on, certain things aren't working and, and they continue to, to push and even, you know, and try, they don't, they're not just saying, well, this season's a dud, right? Like let's start looking at next year. They're even trying within the season to, to, to better themselves. So I, I, I give them kind of the A for effort, but it's, it's a, it's a, we need to see the finished product with them. Right. So, um, I applaud them for, for, for punting on Salcedo, realizing that that didn't work. Um, yeah. So now let's see, you know, what the, what these new players coming in, how, you know, how, how it works out again, too. Uh, very, um, ambitious, the, the Pozuelo move as well. Right. So, um, again, they're making efforts, um, whether those efforts, uh, lead to points and wins we'll find out, but, but uh, I, I love that they're doing something. I think taking the over when it comes to juice boxes for Toronto for the remainder of the season might be. <laughs> that, that, like I said, that's just, that's just me. Dylan Butler, yeah. MLSsoccer.com, hanging out with us here on the midweek with Dylan. I forgot to ask you, uh, how many cups of coffee are, are you on right now? Is this your first or your second? I just do I do it too, but it's a, it's a fairly like large, larger cup. Yeah, okay. So maybe that. I don't know if that was Italy. Maybe that's like four or five cups. I guess they have the smaller cups. But how about Cellini bringing the espresso machine right hey. o over to LAFC's already improving things? Hey man, it's like you, you want to sit there and you want to get on the good side of your teammates. You bring the espresso machine, kind of like what Richard Castle did to to the precinct when. when <laughs> I love it. With the, with I love it. I'm a big I'm a big Castle fan as well. By the way, I think and I think Twelman touched on it as well during the broadcast, but. Think about it. If you're if you're Mamadou Fall, right? Yes. The the what you can just gain, right? Just at training every day and just picking the mind of a Cialini, how much better he's going to be. I love him already. I think his his uh, he's going to be a fantastic center back. Already showing that as a young player, but now to have a mentor like Cialini, ugh. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sky's the limit for him. Yeah, and uh, he almost gets, he gets a yellow card. Uh, in almost gets a yellow in his first appearance too. So he would have had more yellows than minutes when we're, <laughs> to come out of the blocks. That's definitely a way to get with your teammates. So you know, we've gone this far. We haven't even talked about the new manager, soon to be manager, because right now he's a consultant. He's still got to get his paperwork squared away. We have not talked about the new consultant, soon to be manager at DC United, Wayne Rooney. And I knew things were bad at Darby County. 
and, and he wanted to go. And so he knows how to, to deal with things that are in bad situations. So he comes to D.C. United. He's got Toxie Funtas. Wayne Rooney comes back, but he's going to be wearing the – I guess he's going to be wearing the track suit. I don't, I don't see him wearing a tie or anything. He's going no, to be wearing the track suit at Audi Field. What yeah. do you think about that? Well – he, he certainly packed enough luggage. Uh, I don't know how many tracksuits he had in that, but like, did you see the size of like uh, that, that video? Yes. Like the dudes that were pulling it off from the team were like, Whoa, how? like they couldn't even like hang on to it. There's like 50, 60 pounds of luggage. At so least he got the, he got the tag of shame on each one of those suitcases. I'm guessing. I mean, I could just see those guys those from DC United going, bruh, what did you pack here? <laughs> he couldn't wait for like the 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 club assistants to come by and and, and welcome him but uh yeah listen uh, dc is a mess mm-hmm. um bringing wayne rooney in doesn't um you know they're a dumpster fire he's not he's not putting that dumpster fire out all all he's doing i at least in the short term for me is he's bringing a club that into relevance now that's just by his name, by his presence. Like you want to see him on the on the touchline, right? Like you want to see him in the in the press conferences. Um, but I don't know how much that's going to mean to to them as a as a team to get better, right? Like I don't see them making a miraculous push up the table because Wayne Rooney's their manager. Um, I it, it's hard to tell how well he was as a manager at, at Derby County, obviously. Right. Because that was its own dumpster fire. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, again, it, 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 it brings them to relevance. Um, it gets people talking about DC. Uh, if you're a big player from overseas, do you want to come just because Bernie's your manager? I don't know. I, I don't know. I would have thought maybe maybe five years ago you would have said yes, but the way that MLS has improved is where they are now. I would say not so sure. Yeah, no, like I'm not. To me, it's like it's. I'm not super excited about it. Like, like I I hope he does well um, in in this part of his of his career. Um, But I think DC. uh, We've spoken about this before. I think they just they they. They need a lot more than Wayne Rooney stepping in the door to, to fix their problems. Yes, that, that that is absolutely correct. And I think it's, you know, th- it is literally going to be him standing there this season and whatever happens, happens. If you get something done in the next couple of weeks to try to add somebody, uh, I know that you've rearranged some contracts from Loudon to, try to get your folks some uh, you know, MLS based contracts and things like that. But I think DC is in serious trouble this year. And I want to, I want to know what they're going to do in the off season to help Wayne Rooney and everyone move forward. I want to know, I want to know what their philosophy is going to be going forward. This season to me seems like we're going to get him in so we can get butts in seats. So folks can see Wayne Rooney this season to me seems like a wash, except that you've got the, the big name on the touchline that folks can gravitate toward and tailgate. Yeah, and and it's probably also for him to to get in and and sort of see what's around him and what's needed and 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 start planning for the future. I'd imagine. Um, but how many resets is this now for DC? Right, like seventy four, something, something along that lines. Right, like the. But I guess I guess Rooney coming. I guess the smoke out of RFK was like the sign, like a new Pope, right? Like you have ah. that. In the and so maybe that smoke, the fire that was going on in RFK was like, Hey, we have a new manager. Here he comes. Wayne Rooney. I would have just blamed the raccoons for the smoke and the fire at RFK. Maybe. Right? I mean, there might've been a barbecue going on a little party, a little bit too hard there yeah. among those raccoons. Yeah. That, that to me, it's just, I, anything that happens at RFK until further notice for me is the raccoons. Uh, uh, before we get into the midweek weekend stuff, and uh, Jarrett and I will have the midweek whip around patent pending trademark on the way uh, coming up in another part of the network here, uh, All Star roster came out, and I wanted to go with this uh, over this with you. And uh, what did you think about the names that were popped up and some of the appointments that were made, either by coach or commissioner's pick? And uh, I guess is there a big snub since we seem to do this with All Star rosters? Regardless of team and regardless of sport, was there the biggest snub when it came to the all-star grouping? So 
I, I I don't I'm not like the super hot take guy, right? Because I, I I think of it more. I have a balanced approach to my to my snub thinking. Okay. My snub when I think of a snub, I think of then who shouldn't be there. Yeah. Like, don't just give me the guy who should be there. Right. Who's the guy who shouldn't be there? Right. So I think for the most part they've got it right. I think a guy um, off the top of my head who who who's got a shout to probably be there is a Lewis Morgan okay. for, for what he's done with, with Red Bulls. But again, like then positionally, you, is it, is it Ariola coming out? No, I think he's been phenomenal in the first half of the season. Right. So uh, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know who exits the roster for Lewis Morgan. Okay. So then let me give you mine with, with mine. And I'm with you that if you have an idea, you've got, it's like, all right, if this person shouldn't be there, you got to give me somebody who is. Or if someone is, you got to tell me who's not. I will go Justin Glad for Darlington Nagby. Um. Well, the yeah, I mean, the the part of the problem I think is it's like it was situated in the voting, you know, where it's like defensive midfielder, yeah. attacking midfielder, right? right. So defensive midfielders it was like chara nagby i you know is i hear you i i think i think i think part of the problem is like you're 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 attached to a position for certain guys yeah uh and it feels like only certain guys get in for that position right right? like um similarly like a lot of red bulls fans are saying they they should have had at least four guys like Dude, b- guys, I get it, right? Like, <laughs> I, I understand you want your guy in, right? But Carlos Coronel isn't going in no. above Dane St. Clair. He's not going in above Sean Johnson. Like, he's not the best guy, right? You've got Aaron Long, and I think that's a good appointment. I think Long getting in there is very good. But Laquane, like, should he have been in? Maybe, but, like, that's a log jam at attacking midfield. Yeah, if that, and that's the thing. It's like if you put Lucanius into this mix – I mean that you're turning this into a five car, you know, you're you're turning this into a five car wreck at an intersection. It's like, okay, so what what do you do here? And I don't think that you can really have a it, since this isn't one of those where you're trying to go for a 25 or a 28 man roster or 33 like we do with MLB these days right. or 74 or however many it is for Major League Baseball. You can't have four or five guys from one team on. There's got to be something akin to equal representation, and I think that you got that as as well as you could considering what you were trying to do positionally. But then, how many number tens at the same time you're going to get on the field, right? You, it, 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 it's a it's a number it's a single it's a singular position for a reason, right? Like yeah. You're not going to have four number tens in the midfield, right? Like it doesn't it doesn't work that way. So, um, like I said, I think maybe Lewis Morgan, but I, but I I don't I voted for Paul Ariola to be in, yeah. right? Like he was one of the guys I voted for. So, um, I don't think anyone really that I voted. For, I think everyone I voted for got in. Um, if I can remember back to what I voted for, but. Um, and I think, you know, what? I, did I vote for, I'm, I don't think I voted for Calvo. I think I voted for Collins and maybe Zimmerman yeah. as like the center back duo. Right. Um, but I have no qualms obviously with long being in there as well. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's, uh, when, when you, when, when there are tough choices, you know, you're doing something good, right. As a, as a league. Mm-hmm. So um, they were difficult decisions to make in the voting and, and all-star voting, you know, a- any voting is subject to obviously everyone's interpretation and, and, and their fandom, if you will. I'm not a fan of any team. I just picked who I thought were the best players, but um, you know, I get it. Guys are going to be upset about, about, you know, their team not having their guy on it, but I, I think it's a pretty good team. Dylan Butler hanging out with us for another couple of minutes. Uh, getting into the the midweek that is and the weekend that will be. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I can't let you go without your thoughts on the Atlanta United situation with Joseph Martinez and his uh, eight minutes of post match. And Atlanta United's got RSL coming into town, and then it's Orlando on the weekend. And this is, you know, we talked about it all season long. It's a team that has struggled. Seventeen different players, I think, eighteen different. Uh, Injury absences, or 19 or 20 if you count uh, Santi Sosa being in and out and in and out. 
with 34, 35 guys that were on the roster. Joseph says what he says. What uh, what are you looking at with Atlanta United right now? Yeah, it's going to be interesting how they respond to that. Um, I'll be watching closely the, the match against RSL. I, I think, I mean, look, we could do a, a two hour deep dive into into the issues surrounding Atlanta since they're cup winning side. But what I will say is, I think what's kind of really missing right now. And they did try to get this guy in the off season is think about those teams. It wasn't just a Joseph doing his thing. It wasn't just the Miggy Almiron doing his thing. Um, it was a Michael Parkhurst. It was a Jeff Laurentowitz guys who had so much MLS experience who were such great leaders in that locker room, right. To, to bring that team together. So if there were tough times, if there was something to be said at the training grounds, Michael Parkhurst and Jeff Laurentowitz were the, were the guys to get in your grill and set things straight. They don't have that, to me, at least, from the outside looking in. Yeah. They don't have that guy. I would posit, Ozzie, though, that Ozzy Alonso would no, have No, I was about to say that. Guy. Ozzy Alonso would have been that guy. They yeah. tried to remedy that situation, but he can't be that guy from the trainer's room. He can't be that guy as he's rehabbing his ACL because he's away from the group. Like as much as, you know, he can get on a group text or as much he can walk to different lockers, his impact is less because he's injured, right? No, no fault of his own. And, and certainly, again, it, it was a – I love the move from Atlanta in the, in, the, in the season, but I think that's part of the, of the issue for them. I think the other part of it is, you know, we talk about the new shiny toy or the new shining car – that's always been Atlanta's thing, right? Let's get the next best young guy. Let's get the next great young South American player, right? And and turn him around just, again, like it worked so well with Almiron, right? But they've not quite done that with the guys who have followed, I feel like. Um, and at the same time, then jettisoning pretty good MLS guys, right? Like Darlington Nagby, we just talked about him, right? Imagine if he was still on that roster, right? Like right. the impact he would have on an everyday basis. But you don't. You, you get rid of him well, so you could bring in another guy. And those guys, each of them, you know, it, it, it's such a – and look, even you heard uh, in his introductory press conference, Bale did his homework, right? And he talked about how difficult MLS is, the travel, the climates, it's – the surfaces, it's so unique. It's unique to any league in the world, right? Like you're not going to get this in the Premier League, obviously. You're not going to get it anywhere else. Um, so so when you bring in guys who are not accustomed to the league and to the situation, you know, it's a gamble. And, and Atlanta has put their chips in. They put a lot of chips in, obviously. And they've they've – for you know, for the most part, I guess you'd say, have have not done well with with that gambling because again, I think they didn't have that hedge of a Parkhurst of a Laurentowitz to to help that transition or help the the train along. So um, that's at least for me a couple of the things. Um, I don't think it's manager. Um, maybe you start looking at those decision makers above the manager uh, who who make these calls to bring in these players, but uh, I, I think they're missing that MLS veteran guy. Like I, I was even looking at some of the Twitter responses. Um, think about a Dax McCarty on this team, right? That's the same guy. Like he's the same mold as a Jeff Laurentowitz, as a Michael Parkhurst, right? What he would be able to do with this team, um, you know, as, as that leader, I think, again, it's, 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 it's definitely missing. And well, and you know that Gary, Gary would never, uh, Gary Smith would never get rid of a Dax McCarty because of what Dax is doing there in Nashville. Uh, and I know that you and I can can go on this topic for forever and a day and continue to to go on it. But uh, let me get into the weekend and a lot of stuff here. You know the the rivalry re, rivalry week. If I could get my upper plate to work this morning. Uh, brought to us by a particular beverage that is not a sponsor here on the show, so we'll just go ahead and say that yeah, it's a it's a green uh, green wrapping on a beer with a red star. <laughs> so they're they're sponsoring Rivalry Week, and you've got are, are there any of the matchups to you here in the midweek? There's ten, and then there's seven and seven Saturday and Sunday. So it's it's very very busy, very very busy 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 
Anything stick out to you tonight and then again on the weekend? Well, from a rivalry perspective, um, you know, I – we, Cincy we, and fun. Vancouver, man, that's a rivalry right there, brother. We we, all, we always joke about the, you know how great MLS After Dark is, yes. and it is. Then you throw San Jose into the mix, and you throw in Cali Classico. Uh, that's going to be drunk, man. Like that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to that that late night one. Uh, yeah, rivalry wise, it's, you know the nicest rivalry, Minnesota. <laughs> you know, please. But no. wait a second, how can you have a rivalry that's nice? I, it's a, I don't know. Nice. I don't get it. I'm not from the Midwest, so I don't, it's, it's not nice. my thing. It's nice. Um, but yeah, just in terms of matches like tonight, I think definitely intrigued about, it's not a rivalry, but I'm intrigued about Atlanta RSL just yeah. because of what we just spoke about. Um, I think Nashville, Seattle's interesting just in the response from Nashville, right? Like it, even the response from Seattle, right? How both teams respond to, to tough losses. Um, and like I said, I love the I love uh, the Cali Classico. Um, you know, we've, we've got a cool piece on MLSsoccer.com. That, there you that, go. That's Sam Jones. I, it's not me though. Sam Sam put it up um, where he revisited that 2012 regular season game, the one that uh, that had, um, <laughs> if you remember, the the fight, the post game fight with the Sports Center is next. Yes, Beckham against the mascot. Um, <laughs> So that that uh, that's a fun revisit. He spoke to um, Landon Donovan and Chris Wondolowski and 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 has have some pretty cool quotes about about that. So that'll be a cool one uh, as well. And then for the weekends, that's that's where it's more of a of a fun one for me. Um, I've always been a big fan of the Canadian classique. I, I just love it. It's just it's the two cultures. It's like it's Quebec, it's Ontario. They hate each other. It's different languages. I, you know, I'm always a big, big fan of that one. So, so I'll be, I'll be watching that one closely. And even though it's not, I don't think technically a rivalry, I think we've seen some fun because you've had some playoff matchups, even Philly, New England, right? There's been some tense games there um, with arena and curtain and, and, you know, that, that'll be fun. Uh, you got Hudson River. You got Hell is Real. You got yeah, always, always Hudson River. Especially, I think now too, the way that both teams are playing, right? Two of the better teams, two of the top teams in the East. So that I think is interesting. And again, too, I, I love, I love when you get teams that play completely different styles, right? Where Red Bull doesn't want the ball, they wanna, they wanna be combative. NYCFC wants to play the ball, but they want to play quickly. So that that is fun for me. Uh, and I, and I think and I think Dallas Austin as yeah. well is going to be a lot of fun, right? Like it's going to be a tough week for Dallas because you got the two two matches. Uh, they play in my CFC first tonight, but I love uh, that should be a lot of fun too. Again, there's watching Austin the way they're doing it. Um, Copa Tejas is up for for grabs in that one, so uh, so that should be a lot of fun as well. So I, I think those are the matches that I am most intrigued at. Yeah. All right, so uh, time for the plug. What are you up to these days at MLSsoccer.com and other places where folks can read slash enjoy what is going on with Dylan Butler? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've got a cool sort of, again, as we're we're at at the mid-season point, I already did my grades, uh, and those are on OSDBsports.com. But I've got, um, coming up this Monday, my favorites for postseason awards, at least at the midpoint of the, of the season. So, um, I break down, uh, MVP, young player, newcomer, goalkeeper, defender, uh, comeback player and coach. So I give you, I give you the, my favorite at this point. And then I give you the also considered, um, as well. So that those, those like, uh, like those like all-star voting always, uh, bring a lot of attention and, interest so um (laughs) anything to get folks riled up and sitting there and going no 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 yes 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 i agree i disagree no you're wrong yes you're right well well, and and i think i even said it too um in the piece but but i what i will say is this i feel like this year especially for like a mvp or 
newcomer or even young player, right? Like, I don't think there's that guy, like that one guy that you could just say, well, yeah, Carlos Heel is the guy and everyone else is following him. I think it's so wide open this year, right? I think a few of the races are, are sort of like goalkeeper. I think for me, um, like Dane St. Clair and Sean Johnson, probably the two of them right now are separating themselves. Stuver, maybe like a third choice in that, in that run. But, um, but I think for like the bigger awards, I think it's wide open, right? Like I can give you two names for MVP. You can give me two others. You know, the, the, the viewers can give you five others and they, we'd all be right. Yeah. I think at this point, um, which is going to make, I think the second half of the season, a lot of fun. What you said. At Dylan underscore Butler on the Twitters. Dylan, thanks for hanging out with us on the midweek. Uh, enjoy your large cup of coffee with the pinstriped yeah. mug. I figure since yeah. folks are just listening, they don't know what the mug is. It is the the pinstriped mug. Enjoying your don't, don't hate, don't hate. I'm I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> don't, don't hate, don't hate. Just participate. That's what we're here for. Dylan, as as always, thanks for hanging out with us. We will catch up with you next week, my friend. All right, buddy.